Hello, hello. Welcome back to Cooking with Sven. I am your host, Sven. Tonight, we have an incredible recipe um, in line for you. We are taking, we're taking a detour off of our dough, I guess, products, what have you. Tonight, we're not making anything with flour, um, which is kind of, it's, it's kind of incredible to take a little bit of break from that. Um, we've got a great guest lined up for you. And we also welcome back a reoccurring guest. Um, he might as well be one of the hosts on the show as well, too. Uh, but we got some we got some steak and mushrooms for you tonight. So let's Portobello go. Hello. As I said, this is Cooking with Sven. I am your host, Sven. Tonight, we welcome back a reoccurring guest. It's been too long. My man's been in Mexico. He might as well just move there, which I think one day he probably is. Um, him and his lovely wife and their awesome son, uh, Jackson. But let's welcome back Nate Polvold. What's up, bro? What's up, man? I am stoked to be back uh, making one of my all-time favorite meals that I've it's progressed over the years, but uh, steak and mushrooms. Portobello mushrooms, as you can tell from my little cheesy line. And we also are throwing some cheese into this dish as well, but my cheesy portobello go, right? So exactly. awesome. Fantastic to have you back, man. I'm excited to make this dish. Um, and just want to give a shout out, as always, my right-hand man at Dave Fantasy behind the scenes. He may make an appearance here and there, but every camera angles, every switch you see going on, that's going to be my man, Dave. So give a shout out to Dave. Um, and we got a great guest lined up for you. Uh, I just found out he's a scratch golfer. I'm calling him a scratch golfer. He probably would be humble and say he's not. Uh, but it, it is at Duchesne's underscore. What's up, brother? Welcome to the show, man. Oh, I think he's on mute. You're good. Is it on? Is it on? Are you good? I think it's still muted. There we go. It's all good, Shouldn't man. Be muted. Oh, there it is. There we go. There we go. Well, that's interesting. But yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, very excited. Very, very excited to have you, man. Um, and we got tonight, we have ribeye steaks. I believe all of us are actually we're making ribeye steaks, right? So you could use any steak of, of your choice, right? But I think ribeye was the one that Nate had recommended. This is his recipe. Yes. Um, and we're also doing stuffed portobello mushrooms. Specifically on this one, he wants to do some coconut shrimp, which I'm very excited because ironically, I had a huge bag of frozen coconut shrimp in my freezer before you even sent this. <laughs> well, no, I'm not doing coconut shrimp because I don't Ooh. like coconut. But do what you love, man. Coconut shrimp. I'm excited to see how that kind of turns out in this recipe. I never even thought about doing that. So I'm actually insanely excited now. Yeah, I want to see how it's going to come out. Awesome. Well, should we, do you want to get started with the first part here? Let's start getting into the mushrooms. We can get that bad boy in the oven. Yeah, let's 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 do it, man. But hey, just before we do get it started, make sure to hit that subscribe button in between media, and also give us some likes. See that thumbs up? It's easy. Just click it. Yes. Yes, please do. Many. We appreciate it. This is a great show. You should be watching every week. So we're going to get started. This is a shrimp stuffed mushroom that I started it. I don't even remember why I started making it. It's progressed over the years. This is the recipe I've been making for probably three or four years now. We're going to start with a quarter cup of Colby Jack cheese, my preferred. Anything that's a little sharp and a little tangy will work. You might not like okay, it. Okay, okay. You can do whatever you want. Got one clove of garlic I'm going to dump in there. Get that in there. Then I've got two thin green onions that I kind of just sliced up a little bit. Again, all all right. anything with any recipe I ever do, it's all to your taste. A lot of people don't like the same things. I know people who hate cilantro. I'm about to put a bunch of cilantro in this. People who don't like onions, it's fine. Leave it out if you don't like it. I do like, I do like me some cilantro. I do like some green onions. Duchesne, what's, uh, what kind of cheese are you rocking with? Did you get some Colby Jack? I got a Colby Jack going. Ooh, nice, uh, nice. Oh, I've already kind of mixed my onions with it. I'm also yeah. not going with shrimp because I do not like seafood, unfortunately. But I am very excited uh, to have this uh, prosciutto cheese, green onion, and mushroom. Dude, it'll be good. It should be good regardless. 
Right? The it. shrimp, I feel like, is just an added, like, it's just an yeah. added bonus. You know what I mean? Like, to That's it. Um, so, I, so, okay, I got my garlic. I got the cheese. I'm adding my onions right now, my scallions. Beautiful. Now, I've got three thinly cut slices of prosciutto ham as well that I put into this. Ooh, I am going to cut that right now, actually. Yeah, I've already got my prosciutto chopped up in here. Went a little heavy on that to make up for the shrimp protein I was missing out on. <laughs> exactly. Hey, brajute. I mean, if anybody doesn't know what brajute is, I mean, it is by far exactly. Deshane gets it right. Like it's it is it is the best <laughs> ham product that you could probably eat. It like, really is. It's it, my favorite in the world. <laughs> yes. Okay, so now while you're chopping up that prosciutto, I'm chopping up the shrimp, and the reason I waited to do this part. So I'm very particular about how it's done. And I kind of okay. want to talk about that a little bit. So when you're making stuff like this, whenever I do a mixture of so many different things, you kind of want a little bit of everything in every bite, right? Like that's the whole point of doing a mixture like this. So yes, I basically try to get as close to a sashimi cut on the shrimp, just meaning it's like thin as humanly possible on it. Almost to where it's almost like you're throwing it into a food processor. She probably could do. I just always do so many of these things by hand. Um, so one thing I would say, if you don't have great knife skills, maybe you haven't worked in a kitchen and had to do this hundreds upon hundreds of times, slice them when they're just a little bit frozen still. It makes it worlds easier to cut. Yup, 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 yup. That it does. Mr. Scampers, just want to say what's up. Appreciate you tuning in. Nate, hey, where'd you learn this recipe? Is this handed down? I made it up. Made it up. Most of the stuff honestly, that we eat in this household are recipes that I came up with at some point along our 16 years together. Sashimi um, style. Okay. I, I got my coconut shrimp. I'm going to try to – I don't know if I can go necessarily sashimi with it. I'm just going to go – I guess I'll just go really thin. If you want to, uh, if you want to show that camera there, Mr. Dave, my nice food cam. Shane's, what are you drinking there, my man? So I got a peach tart. It's from uh, Treehouse Brewery. It's kind of a big deal Ooh. around Massachusetts. People go crazy for it. Okay, okay. This one's a little bit You have lost your food can. Ah, oh, no. It's my fault. Apologies. <laughs> it, happened. it happened the last time. I have to figure this out, but it's all good. All right, so the last thing I want to show just real quick, this is a trick that my wife taught me, Jen, um, for the cilantro. I've got about a half cup packed in here, unchopped. Instead of going through the braid damage of setting it on a cutting board and trying to chop it up that way, kitchen shears. Take your kitchen shears, take the cilantro in the bowl, and just start cutting. Really? And just keep going. Get it to whatever thickness, whatever size you like, if you want it finer. You could really just go all the way down with it. That is. If you've ever worked in all right. a kitchen, all right, Jen. Slicing herbs is one of the most irritating things you can do. It's just. You worked in the kitchen, Nate. I did for twelve years, actually. You ever hear about putting mustard on a burn? No. Mustard on a burn. Mustard People think burn. it's crazy. Nothing's crazy. Well, I've heard of tomato, actually. I think tomatoes I also can uh, can withdraw moisture as well, I believe, is what I've also heard. But mustard, I like that. It burns, a, it burns like a hell of a boon it goes on. But uh, once it dries, it kind of just burns out the burn a bit when you're on the go in the kitchen. That's awesome. You look ridiculous, but. <laughs> hey, anything so, to get the burn, to get rid of that burn, right? Like, hey, I watched, I, go guy, back in the oven. I watched a guy cauterize his own finger after slicing the tip of it off with meat tenderizer <laughs> and cayenne pepper. So, <laughs> all right, guys, so I just tossed in the seasonings. We've got, I like to use, this is Slap Your Mama's Extra Hot Cajun. Use whatever okay. seasoning you want and just kind of go to taste. You don't want to use a ton of it because it'll get too salty. Then I finish it with paprika. Again, I just shake it. It's something I've never really measured. I just got to a point now where I can kind of I kind of know how much I want. I would say offhand, maybe like two teaspoons of the Cajun and a tablespoon of the paprika is about where I end up on this one. 
So once you've got that all mixed, got your mushrooms here. Make sure that you get the caps out with these mushrooms. Completely removed. Got your oven at 425. Try and do this. Yep. We should have probably mentioned that in the beginning, though. Yeah, we. we uh, I, I have my, I have my oven set at 420. Huh. Yeah, um, nice. <laughs> I put my. I also have my cast iron skillet on as well. I don't know if you need to put that on, uh, Duchesne's. Yep, yeah, I got a um, preheated skillet's a little below medium right now. I'll turn it up a little bit when we're ready. So oh, with yeah. this, when we're starting it off on the skillet. Get that skillet as hot as you can. Like I'm talking, like get okay. some steak on the bottom because we're trying to just sear the outside of these steaks. Okay. Okay. I've got I a secondary pan here. This is what the steaks will be going in when they go into the oven. Sorry with the technical difficulties. I mean, I, I have my mixture already done. I just want to make sure that I. I just want to show it on camera because I actually. Over. We can get over to my cam. Yeah. There are those mushrooms. Yeah. Nice and stuffed. Okay. There we go. You've got, got a lot of color in yours. A lot of paprika, man. Paprika. So I actually, I know that you said oh, sweet that paprika. Oh, that yeah. looks good. Duchesne's, that looked awesome. So here's the shrimp. Nice. Ooh, nice. That's solid. Yeah. Look at that prosciutto. Yeah. As, as a, as a non Italians, dude. non Italians would say prosciutto. <laughs> the <laughs> That's capicola, right? Capicola, capicola right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, hey, hey, Dave, could you mute one of his cameras? Actually, which one are you talking out of, Duchesne? So I was just. I don't know if there's. Phone, but you guys could hear. Me. I think I hear an echo. It's all good. Machine's <laughs> got camera. Just hear me now or no? Yeah. Oh yeah. I hear you now. Yep. Okay. So I was freaking out at the beginning because it wasn't working. I thought. So I mu unmuted both. Wow. This mixture looks awesome. All right. I got to put the cilantro in as well. Oh, cilantro. And I went, I have a Hungarian paprika, which I don't know if you've ever cooked with that. Um, it is by right. far the best paprika that you could possibly put in any dish, right? I'm, I'm Austrian-Hungarian. My father was born in Austria. And when I make schnitzel and goulash, Hungarian paprika is the, like the main ingredient. And it gives it that flavor that is it's very different than your regular paprika, right? So I actually put in the hot Hungarian paprika nice. in this mixture. Yeah. So let me move this. I'll show my mushrooms. Dave, my, my camera, I finally got it back up and running. Yeah. Right? There we go. Nice. I got some big boy portobellos. I got a couple medium-sized ones is what we generally do. Okay. I can only get a pack of them, so... Oh, hey, yeah. get, it's, like just it's one. Like, it's ass something now. It's, it. it's it's still something. We do the little ones every now and again. Just depends on the mood, right? I do. I have a I have a stuffed mushroom recipe um, that I make usually, typically for like Thanksgiving, you know, or like kind of like the holidays and whatnot. Uh, that I really like with cream cheese in it. Mm. Nice. So cream cheese is the best, stuff. man. Yours are probably going to be done quicker, just a heads up, because you're using the smaller guys. Yeah. It's a great call, Nate. I, occasionally, I make them. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Shane, you making your way out to uh, Canton in a couple weeks? Yes, sir. I am. Driving awesome. Out Thursday. Nice. So we will definitely, all of us, we definitely got to... Have a drink. Dave, is well. Dave, will be, Dave will be there as well. Seth will Very be there. Very excited. A lot of the industry is going to be there. A lot of, yes, there is going to be a lot of IBT folk there. So yes. I got my right. I got my mushrooms. Let's go. Just toss toss them in, right, right Nate? Awesome. Nothing else awesome. right now. We're going to 
We're going to add the extra cheese, I think, after, correct? Correct. We're just going to melt a piece of Munster on the top, if you're into that. Okay. Story, of course. Okay, so now, like guys, it. steaks, my favorite part. Yep, my pan is insanely hot for the steaks. As yeah, it's mine is cooking. All right, so I pre-seasoned mine. I seasoned them about an hour ago. Um, I like to let mine get to room temp before I cook them. Yep. I just feel like it helps me get to temp better, uh, get to where I want better. So I've got my two here. I've got my pan starting to steam. So yeah, oh yeah, my pan is ready. My pan is ready right. to go. All right. <laughs> Just what you want to do, toss it on there. Yeah, we throw it on? Awesome. Do it. All right. We throwing it on, Drive. Yeah. There you go. Uh, uh, maybe, I mean, if you wanted to throw a little bit of oil, but there's so much fat in a ribeye that it's yeah. it's gonna it's gonna create that oil for you anyway, you know? So yeah. I always I always yeah. oil yeah. the outside of the steak rather than the pan, especially with the cast iron. That's exactly what I did for these for these bad boys. A lot of cameras coming at you, viewers. A lot of cameras coming <laughs> at you right now. So and I'm loving it. Going. Our main goal here is we're just trying to sear the outside really well. The steaks will then finish in the oven because, again, it's easier to check the temperature in the oven. Right? And I got a thermometer, too, just in case, but... So oh, oh pizza! My buddy Peter. What steak temp do you guys prefer? Spend I like my medium. Medium. All right. It's got to, it's, it's got to be mooing for me. I want to cut in it and have it screaming. No, stop! <laughs> Eat more chicken. Do <laughs> oh, so you work for Chick Fil A? <laughs> So yeah, I'm going off of you, Nate, on the time. I mean, okay, we're going about two to three minutes. Is that what you want to do? Yeah, that works. And I got my butter. Let me get my butter out. So I always go for something like this because it's already got so much seasoning. I use the unsalted butter. Yep. I mean, it's actually the only butter I really cook with besides um, country crock. All right, so let's check these guys. Okay, go ahead and get the steaks flipped. Another reason I tend to see them ahead of time is if you'll see on my steaks here, some of that seasoning comes off of the pan, but there's so much yeah. salt and stuff down in the meat already, it really doesn't matter. Plus, that's going to help us with the sauce. Unsalted butter is always the answer, correct. You can always yes. add. You can never take out. And we've talked right. about this many times on this show. Okay. Now, you've got this down here for a minute. Okay, yeah, that's looking good. You flipping yours? I just flip mine now. All right. How, how many butters are you putting down there, Nate? You're putting two, putting two tablespoons. Two tablespoons, one underneath each steak. Before I flip it or after I flip it? Flip it, let it sit for about 30 seconds, pull it, put the butter underneath. Ooh, okay. Let's do that. All right. I got my food cam over here. Oh, boy. Hear that sizzle? Yeah, baby. I really got you. Got now. That's right. Hey, you said it. First time someone said it during the show. Like in Family Guy. There you go, Dave. There's your Family Guy. You know, like they say the title of the movie in yeah. the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Superman it's 4, cool. the, quest, the Quest Home. Oh, that's why it's called that. <laughs> <laughs> While I've got your attention, guys, uh, you can each take a crack at this question. What wide Ooh, receivers okay. that have been hyped up in training camp the last week are you taking most seriously? Like, wh where do you think the hype is real? Uh, let's start there. Jahan Johnson. Ooh, Ooh okay. Yeah. You let him fall in your rookie drafts for Sky Moore and Christian Wa uh, Christian Watson. Yep. He was falling to the second round of rookie drafts, and he was he was, he was like getting picked pick later in rookie drafts than the NFL draft. <laughs> 
That man's about to do work. Dude, steaks look amazing. Sorry, I'm, I'm going off. Yeah, holy, like that. All right. So I'm transferring my steaks to my second can. Okay. We're going to let them rest for like two to three minutes before we toss them in the oven. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll throw it in a pan like you guys. I got my big uh, cow filon. Hey, that's what I'm using too is cow filon. Yeah, yep, they're cow. not, they're not too big. Question. Why do you want to let it rest before you put it in the oven? It's mostly just a timing thing, but also I, I kind of want the oven cook to be independent of being seared. So when they cool off, I'm almost We're starting enough. back at room temperature. So it's We're letting it rest. rest. Let it rest, and it's going to retain more of the juice. We've seared it. Let that juice settle before we throw it back in the oven for a minute. Okay. All right. Well, I'm off. Now, ready to go in the oven whenever. Okay. Yep, I got it on a pan as well. Okay, so now this pan that you just did the steak in. Yep. Take your garlic, the two cloves. Boom. Shut the shut the pan off. Dump it in. Shut the shut the pan off. Okay. Just shut the heat off for just a couple of minutes. Yep, 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 yep. And scrape the pan a little bit, get any seasonings up or on there. Trying to, but I know we have another ingredient that we're going to add that could help with deglazing it. It will. All right, I'm firing my pan back on. Oh, gonna okay. Go. Just gonna go yeah, see? I don't have the luxury. So here's the other thing that I want to point out for a lot of these people. If you have an electric stove, you treat it very differently than a gas stove. So like Nate said, turn true. it off. Nate said, turn it off. If you have an electric stove, maybe not don't smart to off. actually turn it off. Because <laughs> that's going to take another 10 hours to reheat. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the garlic is starting to get kind of a little brown, which is kind of what we're going for here. We're trying to do a little bit of caramelization roasting on it. Garlic down. Get that pan back on. We have got one quarter cup of whiskey. Cheaper the better because it doesn't really matter. I'm doing um, – my wife is sober, so she doesn't drink. But I am going to go with a little cognac, like just a Ooh. tiny bit of cognac, actually. Yeah. You say I like the – yep, I said cognac. <laughs> Half cup or full cup? Oh, geez. I'm not doing that much. I'm only doing a little. Because <laughs> like I said, my wife, is, my wife is sober, so I try not to cook with, like, alcohol too much. I mean, I know I can cook the alcohol out of it, right? But – I try not to, no, uh, sure, sure. to do it too much. Okay, guys, so now we've got it kind of thickened up here a little bit. I've got the seasoning mixture that's black pepper, a little bit of salt, a little bit of Cajun. We've got paprika and onion powder in there. Yep, yep. Do you like two like medium-sized pitches in there. Stir that in. Put it in now, not the – okay. Put it in now. Look at all that. Okay, now toss the steaks back in the oven. Take a peek at your mushrooms, see how they're doing. Probably getting somewhat close to being ready to go. Yes, oh, they look awesome. Yeah, Shane, yours are probably almost done, right? Looking good. So I'm putting this mixture. You said I'm putting this this mixture in, right, Nate? What's that? This little mixture that I yeah. made of like the cake, yeah. right? Yep, two big pinches of it, dump it in. Once you've got it incorporated, dump that two cups of heavy cream into the pan. Awesome. Stir it up. This is why you buy the, the one pint, because it's exactly two cups. Well, see, I buy, I buy a quarter, so I can have four cups, because I use it so Ah, well, there you go. You're, you're, thinking, you're thinking ahead. I'm a planner, man. It's getting last. Right? She's probably like, he's not a planner. What is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I did forget to mention, my bad, before you toss these steaks back in the oven, those last two tablespoons of butter need to go on top. 
That's what I caught those for, huh? Dude, this cream sauce looks awesome. Okay, so now that we got the cream sauce, what are we, what are we, how are we letting it like get to a boil a little bit and then let it simmer? Yep, we're gonna let it simmer and let it reduce. Heavy cream reduces fairly quickly in this sauce. Okay. I never reduce the heat lower than a medium on it, especially if you have a gas stove. Yeah. Because then it'll literally just burn the middle of your sauce. Awesome. I am putting those. I also still have a little bit more of that mixture as well. Um, that we're, we're, when are we going to use the rest of that? We won't. The spice you're mix. Gonna use, you're going to use it the next time you want that flavor. Oh, awesome. Got it. I didn't I know if we were using the whole thing. That's why no, I asked. No, no. Sorry. I, don't know. I always use it. There you go. There's some steaks coming out of the oven. Look at that. Butter. Butter. And butter. Sorry that my back Actually, is hurting, but I mean, we're on top of these, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Yeah. All right, steak is in there. These guys. I should do this. That's what I should do. Shane, those look awesome. They look so. Yeah, cool. these are looking like potato skins, man. <laughs> those look awesome. Sure okay, so I got my sauce and keep it moving. Cream sauces can break really quickly. Cream sauces can boil over really quickly. Cream sauces can burn very quickly. Yes, they can. That's why I'm going low on my electric stove over here. Although, actually, I should probably bump it up maybe a little bit. Like you said, we got to get a little bit. I'd like to get a little bit of a boil on it. And then once it gets to the boil, reduce that bad boy down, right? Um, we're going we're to be reducing it almost in half. So we'll come down to about the sauce. Okay, okay. Okay, Sven, who's your uh, wide receiver you're believing the hype on? Oh, man. Rookie, you said, or just any? Just any that you're believing the hype on right now? Just anybody that's getting the buzz out of camp, because, you know, they all are getting buzz out of training camp. But who do you think it's most real on? I And I know that I know that Deshane just said that, you know, look at uh, – who was, who was the wide receiver you just said? Dotson. Dotson. Dotson, right? I mean, I I have to believe that the Chiefs are definitely trying to replace Tyreek Hill, and I think that Sky Moore, the way at least from what we're what, from some of the videos that we're seeing of like him, I think they're going to try to use him in a Tyreek slash Debo something. I I don't know. I mean, I think again, these guys' ADPs are are pretty like they're they're fairly lower, right? Than like a, a starting wide receiver already, so. You could get good value, but which one is actually going to hit, right? Um, I also haven't heard much about any other rookie receiver, at least, or, like, receiver as far as, like, the hype goes. But Sky Moore, I think, is one where his hype is there, and I think that they're going to use him, right? Because they, they have Juju, and let's be real, they don't have anyone else after that. As Everybody wants MBS to be good, but I, I don't see it. I don't understand why everybody thinks uh, it's <laughs> ever going to amount to anything. It makes me crazy. Uh, I only like to hype them up because it bugs Seth. <laughs> but Sky Moore, I guess. Okay. Nate, who do you believe the hype on? Does it have to be a rookie? No, just a wide receiver for this question. Darnell Mooney. Ooh. There's been hype about Darnell Mooney. I've seen I've seen plenty of hype about Darnell Mooney, and I believe it. Uh, <laughs> if he's ultra talented, I don't think there are a lot of other receivers there that are steal targets from him. It's going to be Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet in Chicago, and that's. Just I mean, they don't have anyone else, right? They really don't, and I think <laughs> Justin Fields is going to be pretty good. I, I mean, they did get they did get Byron Pringle, so there is that. 
I actually started liking Pringle towards the end of the season last year on the Chiefs. <laughs> I'm sure he's a nice guy. I have nothing against right? him Who's your guy, Dave? Well, actually, so far, I'm excited about Drake London. Uh, mm. Another guy who's really going to have a lack of competitions, lack of competition for targets at wide receiver. Clearly, Kyle Pitts is going to be a heavily targeted player, uh, but he's a tight end, sort of. Right, uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, Drake London is walking into that. Supposedly. Job, having the wide receiver one position basically handed to him. Uh, competing Pretty with much. Guys like Alameda Zacchaeus, Demir Bird, you know, I mean, guys that right. don't really have a pedigree of any sort. And who are these guys, so, right? Like, I'm excited. No Traylon Burks love? I'm excited to see what Drake London does. Oh, well, you know, I, I mean, Traylon. I do like Traylon, Traylon Burks. Burks. He'll have that, the opportunity, right? was awfully reminiscent of uh, Jamar Chase dropping balls in the preseason, I feel. Well, to well, be fair, also, Jamar Chase had Joe Burrow. Traylon Burks has Ryan Tannehill, maybe Malik Willis. Right? In the number one, like, one of the top three run offenses in the NFL. Exactly. Yeah, he just has to be A.J. Brown. That's all. Fair point. Fair That's point. it. That's true. Just, just be A.J. I mean, Brown. It's a whole new situation for everyone. I mean, what? Tannehill's got – he's got Burks, he's got Robert Woods, and he's got Austin Hooper. Three brand new guys in a very different scheme. I mean, Hooper's coming from Cleveland, I guess. So, run run first, whatever. But I don't I don't know. Traylon Burks. I would I would if I'm going for anyone, I guess it would be him. For that nice in between. Who's 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 that comment? Is that Seth or is that you, Dave, <laughs> making fun of yourself? <laughs> Always me making fun of myself. <laughs> All right, guys. Check on your stage real quick here, see where they're at. I've got my mushrooms out already. With the cheese on, just waiting to go back in. Mine are out. Nope. Oh boy, okay, so with all the butter melted, I didn't grab a spoon for this step on the middle. So my steaks look phenomenal. Here is something that I highly recommend everybody grab, not this exact one, but Get yourself a nice steak thermometer that you could just magnetic to the side of your fridge. Oh, that's very easy. Big brain. Very, very easy. These things are they're amazing. Life saving. Alright, let's pretty close to the bottom. I'm gonna give it a quick turn. I just spoon some butter on top. I'm gonna give about 30 more seconds in the oven, and I'm gonna get it back out. At the same time. I need to go back. Do that as well. I am going to – oh, and there goes my food cam again. It's all good. I'll eventually figure that out. Um, one show, but – Kitchen streams are kind of tough, man. It, it is. is. This is definitely definitely something that you don't really see too often, I guess, right? I'm going to flip these steaks. Oh, my God. They're going to look amazing. All right, so my sauce is completely done. I shut my oven off to melt the cheese on the Munster. I'm going to have to pull the steaks out now. Just kind of let them rest for a minute. I am not there yet. We're making great timing, though. Well, I told you, I can do this. I turned it around the other night. I had Jen clock me. We did this dinner on Saturday. I did it in 30 minutes. So. Yeah, I mean, when you're not like explaining the, how to do it and everything, right? You could boom, boom, boom. All right. Come on. It is not coming up, but that's all right. I think my mushrooms have a little bit because I think when I actually cut open those coconut shrimp, they may have been raw. I thought they were cooked, but I believe they were raw, um, which usually some fish, right? Like some shrimp that you get is usually cooked already. Um, so it's all good though. Duchesne, your sauce looks awesome. I love the color of it. My sauce? 
Yeah, dude, that sauce. Oh, no, that's Nate. Never mind. Yeah, those are munchies. Nate, did you use raw shrimp or were those cooked shrimp that you were slicing up? Uh, my shrimp were raw. Uh, hence, I am, uh, uh, nice, Benito, hence his nice little sashimi. You know what I mean? Well, that's what I assumed. I just wanted to specify right? for our viewers. <laughs> You can still sashimi. I mean, technically, you shouldn't be eating raw shrimp anyway, right? <laughs> right. What well, sashimi? Uh, You're making me want to go to the sushi place up up the road from me now. Thirty five bucks, all you can eat. Unbelievable. Ooh, so, are you guys eating immediately after the show? Uh, yes, probably. My wife. I don't know where my wife is. She's she should be home soon. She knows I have a show, so maybe she went to go do a couple errands. Jen is in the living room anxiously awaiting this. Oh, I know she is. She's probably like, can you just finish already? Like, just stop talking and just finish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me ask you guys the inverse to my previous question. Are there any okay. receivers, stay with wide receivers again, that are being hyped in the preseason, in the, preseason the training camp so far, really, that you just don't believe it? Jerry Judy. I feel like this is going to be a constant thing with Jerry Judy. And that's, dude, it's too much hype. I mean, he's going to be their their spot receiver, and we're talking about Nathaniel Hackett, an offensive coordinator in Green Bay that never used slot receivers, and a quarterback in Russell Wilson that never had a slot receiver in Seattle. They're just naturally going to start using one. They might as well trade him. I uh, I don't have one. I buy, I believe all the hype. We ride, baby. <laughs> you crazy. All right, I am gonna switch my boot cam because everything over here is done. I'm gonna turn this into plating cam. I'm almost there. Had to open up another beer. Shane's yours look awesome. That steak. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really psyched right now. How much longer we got to wait here? Right? I am actually going to take my steak out of the oven. We're just going to see what it looks like. And I'm going to finally put my pieces of Munster cheese on top of the mushrooms. You can probably kick the oven off at this point, Sven. Um, yeah, probably. Okay, so something I want to point out to everyone at home, the key to plating this dish, you see all that delicious butter that's still in there? Don't let that go to waste. No, no, no. That's gotta go back over the top of your steak. Yup, yes, those are the mushrooms. Munster, Munster cheese might be the most one of the most underrated cheeses out there. Oh, it's not even close. It's a fantastic yeah. cheese. It is so good. All right, put that in there. I was kind of expecting you to say most difficult to find cheese. I had to go to three stores. <laughs> made, but. Really? What, what do you? I mean, you have no shortages of potatoes in Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> True. Cheese? Really? Although, monster cheese? That's crazy. Although the search for monster cheese with my kids was pretty exciting. So. <laughs> uh, Gotta make an adventure out of it. It's part of being a parent. Hey, fun fact, company secret, Little Caesars uses a blend of mozzarella and monster cheese as their cheese. What? Look at it. A lot of people Seriously? use cheddar. You may have just changed how I'm going to go to Little. I'm going to go to Little Caesars now. Like, and ask for just legit. a cheese. It's so good. If I'm going cheap, if I'm going cheap, I mean, I told you, you guys knew that I used to manage a Pizza Hut. Haven't had Pizza Hut in forever since I left the place. <laughs> that makes sense, right? I don't I'm know. I just guys. don't want to go. Yeah. See, I mean, also, I am from New York, so I can't in all right say that those that pizza is actually good <laughs> otherwise my new york card will be stripped away from me which no some people down here in texas would definitely say we were talking I about mean, cheap uh, pizza options <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah this sauce oh yeah 
I kind of awesome. stole it. We used to do a peppered New York strip steak where it was a little bit of salt and just like crushed black peppercorns coated on both sides. And we made a cream sauce from it, but it was just with the drippings. And like super simple. And I was trying to impress Jen, of course. I'm going to make you steak with this sauce. And it's just progressed over the years into what it is now. And it's great too, like if you're having vegetables, we do a lot of um, prosciutto wrapped asparagus in our household. It's, it's really delicious, but it's great Ooh. to dip in the sauce as well. Prosciutto wrapped asparagus. Yep. You can also wrap that in phyllo dough and bake it if you really want to. Okay, now we're that. really talking. Right? I mean, now you're throwing phyllo dough. What is this? I'm loving it. You know what I, I used to I, do? I think I might have my camera back up, my food cam. <laughs> nice. Now I just need to show the food, though. Here's my steak. Shade, your, dude, your steak looks perfect. Nice. Uh, this is a struggle of sitting here looking at it. Right? Like a lot. I just want to take Jen's over to her. <laughs> I got those two. My sauce is still, I still see the bubbles. Like it's not like it's not boiling, but you can see, you know what I mean? How it's kind of like it's, it's, yep. Yep. it's doing something. It's doing something underneath there. All right. I can't, I have to take Jen. Yeah. Yeah. Take it over to her. Do what you got to do, man. My mushrooms are almost done. I mean, just Shane's, if you want to plate yours up, bro, by all means. I'm going to do just that. Because I am insanely jealous. I'm just waiting for my <laughs> my, monst my monster cheese to melt. Oh, that's seasoning. Some good stuff. Woo! There's the portobellos. Just pull these bad boys out. Awesome. This looks fantastic. All right, I'm just gonna pour this sauce. Actually, I'm just gonna take it directly from the pan instead of actually pouring it into a bowl. Okay. I'm gonna try that out. Do I have a spoon to do it with? It is cast iron, so it'll be pretty tough to scrape. Yeah, you're not gonna mess it up. Right? I mean, I'm gonna use a metal spoon, but I highly doubt I'm gonna scrape it. <laughs> it's got a nice medium to medium rare on mine here, which I'm very excited about. All right. Little plate can. This is so hard. <laughs> it's so hard. To get the camera right. I gave him some eyebrows. He's kind of looking like a face. Oh, every week. Awesome. We, go, we go through this every week. It's, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah. She's cutting nice. Back on the stove. I'll put this in a little bowl. Oh, yeah, this sauce, dude. Now it's starting to, like... Emul emulsify? Is that a good word? Mm -hmm. This t The top cap of this ribeye is, is so tender. I don't know if I'm using the right nomenclature, but there's this one spot right above, above this fat. It's Those are always the best that's part. What I, that's what I love about ribeyes. And there's so much of that fat cooks into the meat, which obviously makes it a pretty unhealthy cut. But okay. <laughs> steak, is, steak is supposed to be decadent. If you're going to eat it, you got to go for it. All right. Just trying to organize my kitchen over here a little bit. Awesome. I have mine prepped right here. Let's see it. Steak. It almost doesn't even look like a stuffed mushroom, right? It kind of looks like right. a like a potato. It looks like potato or skins, man. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. The big reveal. The big reveal. How did everyone's come? Do we like it? I love I it. I think it's perfect medium rare ish. To little maybe more towards medium than medium rare, but yeah, I got mine a little bit over what I would have probably wanted, but still, it's delicious. It's just like it's pushing oh, medium yeah. well, I think a little bit. The mushrooms just look so damn good. <laughs> Well, the thing about a ribeye, too, is it's a forget, pretty forgiving cut of steak. If you overdo a New York strip, it's going to be yeah. awful. But ribeye stays so tender because there's so much fat in it. Yeah. Dude, that sauce. Wow. And I didn't even put a, I didn't even put that much of the actual, like, seasoning that you – you know what I mean? Like the one with like the paprika and this and all of that. Like yeah. I literally put in the two scoops, like you said. I, I'm I wish I want to put more in actually. <laughs> well, the thing is, is you get so much flavor from the meat itself, cooking in that exactly. Meat Plus the oh. whiskey gives you some flavor, it gives you a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of like pepper, depending on what you use. So <clears throat> I don't know, it's my it, honestly it's my favorite sauce. I've had and I did places. I made a creamy pepper, and I think I told you about it actually when I made it. Creamy peppercorn cognac sauce. Yep. Oh, and I made it for ribeyes. Like ribeyes probably are one of the best cuts. Like you said, like there's so much flavor in it. You could literally have a ribeye with salt and pepper, and that's it. And that's all you need. That's all I throw on. Yeah. yeah. All I do is salt, pepper, and granulated garlic or garlic powder, whichever one is more prevalent in the house at the time. <clears throat> Which I think I've talked about it before is chef salt, but that's that's all you eat on a steak. You don't need this, to put anything else on it. This stuffed mushroom, I feel so bad for anybody watching the show right now, like that cannot be a part of what we are eating. Dude. Man, I'm so the happy. Coconut, the like coconut it. shrimp, the coconut shrimp is actually, you, you don't get, like, it's not like too much. It's honestly, I don't even taste the coconut. Like, I think the brajute being so salty overpowers, which isn't a Absolutely. bad thing, right? Like, it's not, mm -hmm. it's not a bad thing at all. But it, oh my, oh. <laughs> Yeah, wow. I almost overdid the prosciutto, but I, I held I held back just enough. I still have I still have like three more slices in the fridge. I'm actually again I'm upset I didn't put all of it in. <laughs> if you put too much in, it does get overpowering. I've over I've it overdone the prosciutto before, and it's just too salty. Mm -hmm. Three slices is kind of, but I always get six slices because I feel bad asking for three slices from the deli. At least six is reasonable. Right. And let me check this. Yeah. Who's that? Who's that little person? Come here, bud. Okay. What's, okay, what's up? Is that, is, that, is that Jackson? Of course it's Jackson. Come here, bud. What's, what's up, Jackson? Oh, my God. Oh. This has been this absolutely fantastic. Like, Duchesne, yours looks awesome. How did it come out with the little mushrooms? It was fantastic. It's so good, dude. Like all yeah. the cheese inside was melted. <laughs> yeah, it, it, the, the the mushrooms have just the right texture, not too firm. Awesome. And then the monster on top, I broiled to get a little char on there. You can nice. hear. It. Yeah, it sounds crispy. This has been a blast, guys. Sven, thank yeah. you for having me back to cook. I love it. Dude, I, love I mean, you know, you know, you are obviously more than welcome. Um, and Deshane's obviously like this was fantastic, man. I really appreciate you coming on for kind of a little bit more complex of a recipe too than what we've normally done on the show too, right? Like most of the recipes that we typically have done here is it's they've been not fairly easy, but we're not making you know stuffed mushrooms with all of it like and then the steak and like we've done dough products we've done pasta pretzels biscuits uh we did pizza with uh mr nimble numbers in the last episode scott simpson um yeah so really really truly appreciate you coming on and and uh you know obviously tailoring your kitchen to get the live stream uh up yeah, and running yeah. for us but you could see you could see what goes what's involved right like in the whole process so yeah, it was great. Um, 
I haven't cooked a ribeye in a few months, actually, so this was nice. And I've never cooked a mushroom like this. this is, I'm going to be taking this one. And I, I'll, I'll try to remember to give you credit, Nate, but I might have to eat it. If, if it goes well at the in-laws Christmas or something, I might have to, I might have to take it. If, if you want, <laughs> if you want another recipe for for like the the stuffed mushrooms that I do, like different than this, so you could make it a lot easier. Like I put the mixture in like a bag, and I use like a basically like a piping bag, yeah. right? And I just stuff I stuff them yeah. that way. Um, with breakfast sausage, dude, it is <laughs> it it's it's a fire recipe, man. I'll yeah, I'll definitely I'm gonna have to now, dive into your archives. Now that we're talking about it, I gotta get that on paper. I gotta get, I gotta <laughs> get that it. written down. Do it. <laughs> Well, this has been awesome. Um, appreciate everybody viewing in. Uh, please be sure to subscribe. It's just one click. It's very easy. Instead of scrolling through your TikTok, you know what I mean? Just click the subscribe, hit that thumbs up, right? More likes. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Nate, thanks for coming by um, and providing this recipe. I mean, this is a fantastic recipe. Uh, make sure to follow at Duchesne's, uh, at Duchesne's underscore. Uh, follow Nate at Nate Polvolt. On Twitter, I'm pointing the other way. I don't know. I can't. So hard. I can't get it right so ever hard. on a live stream ever. I can never get it right on a live stream ever. <laughs> uh, be sure to follow me on Instagram, Shven Cooks Food. Twitter at Fantasy Shven. Uh, we might be here in two weeks. We uh, we might have a schedule change because of the expo that's coming up. Uh, all of you fantasy football content creators and or fans, we'll see you guys in two weeks. Right? Two. Right. Yes, sir. Less than two weeks. It's less than two weeks now. Holy crap. We'll all be in Ohio. That's awesome. Um, but thank you. Thank you again for tuning in. And uh, we'll, we'll see you guys next time.